The Rorschach inkblot test was developed by this sexy guy right here, Herman Rorschach, who was the first to systematically study inkblot testing. He developed his work in 1921. But even before his time, the idea of inkblot testing was not a new concept. Have you ever looked up at a cloud and seen some sort of image or object? I see a cat. I see a dinosaur. And I see nothing. The sky is always one big gray cloud in Sackville. If this has ever happened to you, don't worry. It's called pareidolia, and is defined as a psychological phenomenon involving a vague and random stimulus being perceived as significant. But more specifically, Justanus Kerner published a book of poems based on ink blots in 1857 and called it Klexography. From this, a children's game was created. It was called blotto, and children would write poems based on their own perceptions of ink blot images. As you can see here, little Donald is writing a poem about a dragon eating a cat. It's quite horrific. Similar to Donald, Rorschach really liked this activity as a child. Furthermore, Binet was the first to study ink blots and analyze creativity in children. Because Rorschach liked this game as a child and was interested in Freud's work on dream symbolism and free association, when he was writing his dissertation on hallucinations in schizophrenic patients, he noticed that they responded quite differently to the blotto ink blots that other, than other people did. Many critics at the time said that the Rorschach test was too subjective, had problems with inter-rater reliability, verifiability, and lacked general validity. It was also found that a limited number of psychological conditions were accurately diagnosed from this test, many of which are still discussed today and will be focused on later in this video. I could give you a long scientific definition of what projective testing is, but it is basically seeing how people think by hearing how they describe what they see, and Rorschach did not intend for his test to be used in this manner. He used it solely as an indication of schizophrenia, but it was later used to assess individual personality in 1939, also something that he did not intend for the test to be. Unfortunately, he could not object because he died suddenly at the young age of 37. John Exner, the subsequent researcher of the inkblot test, changed its trajectory significantly. He made the test less ambiguous and standardized its measure. He made it into a more comprehensive test which made interpretation similar amongst all interpreters. He also named an inkblot system after himself and called it the Exner Comprehensive System. His system is still used today especially in the United States. Its popularity could be attributed to the increased emphasis on individualism and everyone responds to ink blots differently and how everyone's personality is different. Exner said, The interpretation of a Rorschach record is a complex process. It requires a wealth of knowledge concerning personality dynamics generally as well as considerable experience with the Rorschach method specifically. Proficiency as a Rorschach administrator can be gained within a few months. However, even those who are able and qualified to become Rorschach interpreters usually remain in a learning stage for a couple of years. However, that being said, there was still concern for lack of standardization. Even after Exner's attempts to standardize the Rorschach ink block test, it is still considered to some as subjective and indefinite, with different administers, criteria, and scoring. People argue that different ages of test takers, different test proctors, different personalities, and different conditions of the test all provide different results. In fact, a recent study in 2005 by Jorgana Josic and Jean Michel Pitot compared the five factor model of personality to the Rorschach in block test. They said that the Rorschach scores and ratios have only poor or no correlations with the dimensions assessed by recognized inventories of personality, the psychometric properties of which are well established. We believe. The reason why the Rorschach ink blot test is so popular is because of the sheer amount of criticism it has received. Donald Biglioni Jr., a present day clinical psychologist, no, not me. Came up with 37 issues with the methods of the Rorschach ink blot test. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
Even though these weaknesses exist, it is still used today in both professional and mainstream culture. Contrary to popular belief, this is not how the test is used. All right, clients, what do you see here in this ink blot? I see butterflies and rainbows! Okay, you're fine. You can go home now. I see a doctor. He'll turn out just fine, son. I see dead people coming towards me. It appears you have schizophrenia. I will see you next week for your first appointment. Although the test isn't actually used to automatically diagnose disorders, it can still be used today as the suspicion of a disorder, especially schizophrenia. Good work, Rorschach. More commonly, the Rorschach inkblot test is used as a source of therapy and coaching in self-reflection. It is used on children and shy individuals to help them open up with their therapists as well as in the court system and law. The following is a dramatization of how the Rorschach inkblot test is done today. The tester and the subject typically sit next to each other at a table, with the tester slightly behind the subject. This is to facilitate a relaxed but controlled atmosphere. There are 10 official ink blots, each printed on a separate white card approximately 18 by 24 centimeters in size. After the test subject has seen and responded to all the ink blots, the tester then presents them again one at a time in a set sequence for the subject to study. The subject is asked to note where she sees what she originally saw and what makes it look like that. The subject is usually asked to hold the cards and may ro rotate them. As a subject is examining the ink blots, the psychologist writes down everything the subject says or does, no matter how trivial. Analysis of responses is recorded by the test administrator using a tabulation and scoring sheet, and if required, a separate location chart. Even though Donald is writing down and testing the indi individual, there is a trained professional that scores and interprets these observations. The process of administering the Rorschach ink block test seems more objective than in the past. However, there are still problems with reliability and validity that cannot be overlooked. That being said, the Rorschach ink block test should not be used individually for the diagnosis of patients, but rather in conjunction with more empirically based assessments. Although it may not necessarily have a positive public image, the Rorschach ink block test is still argued by many psychologists to have a role in clinical, forensic, and child psychology. As you can see from this video, the Rorschach ink block test is an important part of the history of psychology, thanks to Rorschach. Rorschach? 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 No, I think it's Rorschach. Rorschach. Alfred Binet? <laughs> <laughs>